one guy started jacking me off on the um, dance floor. <laughs> one guy put his hand in my. I mean, so I mean, all these experiences. I mean, I could go on and on about that. This is this is tame for most gay men's experiences. But I I I was was really. Um, and the funny thing is, I was not. I was really. How do I put this? I was really DTF. Okay, I was totally down to fuck for the most part. Um, when I was in my twenties and stuff. And so if somebody would came up to me and I was attracted to them, I, pro- I probably would, would go home with them. Generally speaking, if I was attracted to them and I was single and everything, but, and if, you know, but I was generally looking for, um, something serious. And so I was like an old soul. I still am like stuck in like a young person's body. Even in my twenties and my teen years, I always wanted a relationship. I was never a wham, bam, thank you, man kind of guy. Um, you know, I had plenty of one night stand experiences and, um, they were fine and it was okay, whatever. But for me, I was always looking for more than that, something deep and meaningful because that's who I am. And I did not want something superficial and shallow. And so, um, it was really hard for me going to the bars and stuff like that in my twenties because I just didn't really fit in. I didn't really belong there. Um, and it was always, you know, people in my age, especially in my twenties, were looking for that. They were looking for fun and for sex. They weren't looking for something serious. Um, and that's why typically I dated guys who were older than me, um, then. And I typically was interested in people who were, um, you know, if I were dating someone near my age range, they, they had to be interested in a relationship unless we were just, unless we were just had a sexual thing, you know, of course that happened to you, but, um, generally that's what I wanted. So I was just kind of an outcast that way. And it's unfortunate because I've always been different no matter what. I mean, even, you know, first of all, I'm gay. Secondly, I'm biracial. Um, third, I'm not promiscuous. I'm very different than most of my gay friends that I've had in the past. I'm very different. I don't really fit in with black people as a whole. Um, I don't really fit in with white people as a whole. I don't really, I didn't really fit in with, you know, Hispanics. I didn't fit in with, with, you know, Asians or whatever else is left. I didn't fit in with anybody a hundred percent. I mean, I had friends of all races and creeds and stuff and I had, and I still do, but it wasn't because necessarily because I was biracial so much as I just was always just an outcast. I was always weird, um, different. And I still am, you know, I'm just, I don't, there's very few people that I'm really close to. And that's by design, as I've talked about before in the show, um, because I don't trust people uh, a lot and I don't let them in. I have to really know you for a really long, long time to let you in a hundred percent to my life and to my heart and to trust you. And once I've done that, if you break that trust, it's very, it, well, it's impossible to get back ever, but that's why I'm gun shy ever about actually letting people into my life because I've been hurt so much when I was younger because I am, I'm, I'm an emotional person and vulnerable and I'm, um, sensitive and all those things. And so uh, it's dangerous for someone like me to just wear his heart on his sleeve all the time and let people in no matter what, who they are, whatever they say, you have to really, you really, it's a way it's a the protection device or mechanism in order to protect my heart. And so when I was going out in those days, um, you know, when I'm in my twenties, I was wearing my heart on my sleeve and I was just very direct and straightforward. We're going to talk about that tonight, actually in a minute in general. Um, but I was just direct, straightforward. If I liked you, I told you, if I didn't, I told you, <laughs> I, I, I didn't play games. I didn't beat around the bush. I just said, I didn't want to waste time and I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to hurt somebody else. And so I just was always honest with people. I'm like, if I liked you, yeah, I like you. Let's go out. Let's be committed. Let's be in a relationship, whatever, or let's just fuck or, or, or let's just be friends or whatever the case was. I was completely straightforward about it. Um, and that wasn't always the case in return. Typically men, then and now I think probably like to play games and uh, you know, men, I don't think it's like, like to play games. I think that they're just men in general are insecure and they don't want to be seen as the bad guy either. And that applies to gay men as well. We don't, I, for some reason it's like we are conditioned to be, um, it's different for gay men, I think, than straight men. Straight men can get away with it. They're a dog, whatever. Yeah, you're a dog. You're an asshole because you, you know, you're a player, um, and it's kind of revered. But with gay men, I think it's sort of a, a double edged sword because on one hand, you're you're revered for being a player, and ooh, how many guys you sleep with this week or whatever. On the other hand, you're you're you know, reviled for it, and people that hate you for it and think that you're a disgusting or a horrible human being. So I personally never liked players. I never liked people who played games. I was always somebody who respected and admired people who could be honest and straightforward 
even if it hurt my feelings. I always, always preferred that. And I think everybody's that way. Whether you say it, admit it or not, I think people want to hear the truth no matter what it is. So I, you know, when I was in my 20s and stuff, and I, that's how I was. And so that's how I, I was just different. But anyway, we're talking about um, being blunt. I was saying a minute ago, being blunt, telling the truth or whatever. And it got me in a little trouble. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty straightforward and <laughs> about things and how I feel. Um, and, you know, a lot of times my, my opinions are not um, popular, uh, whether it would be with people who are different than I am or people who are the same, people who are friends in my circle or outside my circle. A lot of things I say people don't agree with, and that's their right, but it's also my right to say what I think as well. It's also my right to feel what I feel and to be able to voice that opinion um, and, to de and to deal with the consequences. As I've said before in my show, you know, when you say something, um, you have the right to say whatever the fuck you want to say, but you also have to remember that there are consequences for anything you say for good and for bad. And so you have to be able to accept that. And that's how I am. I accept the consequences of anything I say and do, um, because I'm doing it with a knowledge that there are consequences to my actions. Sometimes I know they're negative consequences, but I say it anyway. I just have this inability to fucking fucking filter myself. Most of the time, I'm typically very straightforward. Um, and, you know, it gets me in trouble sometimes because people don't like to hear the truth. And I don't mean my version of the truth. I mean the truth, meaning like the irrefutable reality, realistic, you know, version of the truth, the unobjective or the objective version of the truth. Um, and people don't like to be faced with that because a lot of times people would prefer to stay um, deluded <laughs> and to continue to be living in some little fairyland or whatever, depending upon what it is you're discussing. Um, but anyway, a friend of mine, well, I don't know if she's a friend, but she's somebody I know online. I've never met her in person. And, and she's somebody I've known for probably three, four years. I've been on doing my show for four years. So I've known her for about three and a half years, I think on here. And we don't really talk that much anymore or anything, but um, I, I'd seen her picture before and seen her on uh, Facebook or whatever. And she's, um, she's probably in her, I guess she's in her forties. I'm not sure exactly how old she is, but anyway, she posted a picture of herself and the other day and I responded and I said, Oh my God, no. Like that's a, <laughs> and I saw, I said, like it was a horrible picture of her. Okay. Normally I probably just wouldn't say anything, but this picture was e exceptionally unattractive. Okay. I mean, honestly, exceptionally hideous of her. I mean, she looked really bad. And let me explain to you what it looks like. She's like sweaty. Her hair is pulled back. She, her eyes are all weird. Uh, she has a mustache and a beard, practically. So the woman did not look good. And by anyone's assessment. Now, her, I said this and people jumped on me, friends of her or whatever. And um, she said, well, I don't like your picture either, whatever. And I was like, you know, look, I said, I said to her, I said, I just don't think that's a good picture of you. I've seen look much better than that. You, it doesn't make you, I said, it, just because it's a bad picture doesn't make you a bad person. I just think that you look unattractive in that picture. You don't have to, to accept my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but that's what I think. So, um, and there wasn't really no brouhaha about it after that or anything, but she just said she was stressed or whatever, whatever the time. But my point is, why would somebody post a picture of themselves looking that disgustingly horrible? I have pictures like that. We all have pictures like that where we look so hideous to ourselves and to most people. If we people saw them, you're like, oh, my fucking God, yuck, right? And like if you first get up in the morning or, or you just haven't shaved or I don't know, whatever the case may be. And, you know, this is not about beauty, not about how attractive someone is, you know, physically on a scale of attractiveness. I'm talking about just being, um, your best self. And I don't know, I'm just different, I guess. I, I, I do, um, try to put my best foot forward, uh, online uh, on my my off limits show page because um, on my pictures and stuff you know some of them are heavily photoshopped i told you before some of them are are um, not photoshopped at all some of them are professional pictures some of them are pictures that are taken just around you know the house or whatever around town or with friends or something so it just depends on you know 
where the picture was taken or, or whatever. But if it's on there, it's a picture that I feel is flattering to some degree of myself or that I like. Why would you put pictures of yourself out there that you don't like? Now, pictures of myself that I don't like are all over my personal Facebook page. You know, my, my friends and my family, you know, in the real world who know me have seen those and see those. And I don't really care because they're my friends and family. They don't, they don't care what I look like or whatever anyway. But, but I don't... I don't find it to be, it just seems weird to me. And maybe it's my own problem or issue and it probably is, but why I personally could never do that. And so is it wrong of me to be blunt and to be completely direct and truthful about how I'm thinking about something? If someone saw a picture of me that they thought was just butt ugly, hideous, (laughs) I would want to know. That's me. I would want to know because first of all, I probably would not put it up there in the first place. Like I just said, but I would want to know if there were a photograph of myself out there that looked but ugly because it's not a real representation of what I look like, generally speaking. Maybe at that moment, but generally speaking, it's not. And why would somebody want that out there? So I would want to know. I would say, oh, my God, thanks for telling me. I'm glad you know. Thanks for, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for being truthful. And to me, being a real friend means being truthful means being honest, means being able to be blunt, even without tact sometimes. Being able to be like, oh my God, why are you wearing that? Or, oh my God, what are you doing in your hair? Oh my God, you know, what did you say? Or whatever, I mean, you're talking about. The fact is, a true friend, in my opinion, can always be 100% truthful. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't consequences to that, as I said earlier. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get someone who's pissed off at you for saying it or someone who is not happy with the thing that you said or or thinks that what you said is wrong or pisses them off or makes them mad or whatever either. Um so it's not just about that either. It's also it's just about the fact that people are um that I think friend true friends have to be truly honest with one another, one another and not be um fake. And I, there's nothing I hate more than being fake. I hate fake people. And I think we all know there are fake people on this network that, um, you know, certain ones specifically, um, that, that are completely fake. I hate, I hate fake people because I don't understand them. And I think that they're, I don't know. I just hate them. <laughs> I mean, I use that word, you know, selectively. I hate fake people. And so if someone's going to be, if my friend, they can't be fake, they can't be, oh my God, you look so wonderful today. And we think, oh my God, he looks like shit. Because the truth is is power, in my opinion. And so if I know I look like shit, I can do something about it. But if I don't know, then I don't know. I can't do anything about it. So that's just a little bit about that. But I think that telling the truth is not always the best policy. No. Um, but I think most of the time it is, I think the majority of the time it is the right thing to do. I'd say 99% of the time, um, even if it pisses somebody off. And if someone can't take a compliment or excuse me, not a compliment, someone can't take a, a, um, an, uh, observation, uh, and an opinion from a friend that's meant not to be, you know, malicious, not meant maliciously, then they're not really a friend anyway, in my opinion. And speaking of friends, um, you know, Republicans, you know, I've had Republican friends throughout my life. I grew up around Republicans. Um, not my mom, not my grandmother, but um, extended family and people around us or whatever. And I think that, you know, um, it's always odd to me to have friends, quote unquote, that are someone who's a Republican. And I mean a right-winged Republican, a right-winged conservative Republican who's friends with someone who's gay and a liberal. Um, and the reason I, I have an issue with it is because someone like that typically does not believe in gay marriage or they think gays are evil or gross or disgusting or child molesters or whatever other horrible things they can say. But even if they don't, even if they are not someone who necessarily believes that themselves, they align themselves with a party that does. They align themselves with a group of individuals that whose main message and actual platform states that that they don't agree with homosexuality or homosexual quote unquote lifestyle or being gay or, or gay rights or equality, blah, blah, blah. So if their actual platform says that, and they are, they are a self-ascribed Republican, then um, in my opinion, that makes them equally as guilty because I can't be friends with someone that is not, they don't have to believe that everything I do or think the same way I do. But when it comes to my own personal freedoms, it's ridiculous for me to be friends with someone who who's fighting against that or is against the idea of equality for everyone because I am fighting for that. 
So why would I be friends with someone who, who disagrees with that and someone who's literally fighting against me? But the fact that they're fighting against me means that they're my enemy, in my opinion. In my, the fact that they're fighting against me means that they're, they're not part of my, they're not really my friend. And if it were something that were not a civil liberty we're talking about, if it were the fact that, that they, they believe something, you know, about fiscal, uh, something different that's, that's not affecting me. 